Uh, thanks for joining us on the session today. Uh, looking forward to speaking to Ben about um, all the great things Vodafone are doing at the moment and the journey they've been on from a transformation piece, um, of, uh, I guess from an introduction perspective for people that don't um, know a lot about HackJob. So I'm the lead account manager at HackJob. My name's Darren. Um, so I've been with the business for uh, three years as of last Tuesday. Um, anyone that doesn't know a lot about HackerJob, essentially what we do as a business um, is we're a community for engineers. Um, and the, uh, I guess the main outreach of what we're trying to do as a business is to help engineers um, in the UK and uh, plans for later in the year is to, uh, is to launch this much more globally um, to help engineers maximize their potential uh, from a perspective of what they're doing in the industry and help clients to uh, get the best talent in. So that's kind of us. Uh, and hi, I'm Ben Connolly. I'm the head of digital engineering here at uh, Vodafone in the UK. Uh, we look after all of our digital uh, channels, so our websites, mobile apps, uh, voice assistants, things like that, and, uh, and the platforms that they sit on as well. Uh, so we're going to give you all an overview of um, a few things uh, today, and then we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A at the end as well, because I'm keen to, to hear from everybody. Uh, essentially, a bit about the journey that Vodafone's been on, um, from what we call a transition from a a telco, traditional telco, telecoms organization into uh, tech comms in, in that uh, we're first and foremost a technology business um, these days and, uh, and what that means for us and, and some of the principles that we used uh, and helped us get along the way. Uh, a little bit about specifically our journey uh, around the transition from what that means on the ground in terms of engineering and, and, uh, and the, the principles again that we, that we used to get there. A little bit about Vodafone as an organization and how we go about hiring and finding talent um, and retaining uh, the best people. And, and I think there's a little demo of a couple of bits at the end as well. So we'll, we'll rattle through that. And again, really keen to get um, Q&A going um, and, uh, and we'll see what happens from there. So let me uh, figure out how to share my screen then. There we go. I'll share the desktop. Then dive into... Go back to the top, sorry about that. You have to sneak yeah. there. So there's us. Um, is that working? Can we everyone see? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, cool. So Ben, Darren, um, here we are. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the journey, like I said, talk about tech comms, uh, about our EVP or basically attraction uh, and uh, re retention of our people, um, experiences in terms of how, what it means to us uh, digitally, uh, and again, plenty of Q&A at the end. Uh, so Vodafone's journey uh, to reinvent itself, if you like, or, or our strategy, our purpose uh, and our, our, our drive is to genuinely become uh, a purpose-led organization. Uh, you'll hear that right from the very top of Vodafone globally. Um, and what we mean by that is um, uh, focusing on society, uh, a digital society, uh, what that means in terms of connectivity and, and uh, behaviors and expectations of, of us uh, and how to support society better like that. Making sure it's inclusive and it, it includes absolutely everybody in that uh, and is available to everybody and also our impact globally uh, on the planet and how we can become more sustainable and, and have much less of a footprint uh, on, our, on our planet as well. Uh, there are key pillars uh, to, to that um, strategy. Uh, as you can see there, it's to become a tech comms company. And, and I'll just talk a little bit about what, what really that means because uh, telco uh, or, or um, uh, us and our, and our um, competitors in this in this space um, we've kind of evolved in the same way there's been a pattern to it uh, and and certainly um, a, a great focus on our network which is of course why why we're here it's to provide that connectivity to uh, to people uh, to to those that they love and the, the information that they need in it and and so that that focus on network has really been here in all telco from the beginning uh, Trans and part of that it means that IT has historically been uh, outsourced. It's been largely de delivered by partners um, with a relatively small number of uh, Vodafone people um, steering, uh, setting the, the scene and strategy for those deliveries, but managing those partners um, and the deliveries, making sure they're on time and, and within uh, our expectations and things like that. So, so transitioning from that to be to a technology business, which is a much much more of a cultural journey, if you like. Um, behaviors, uh, principles, and practices uh, are super important in that world. Uh, and it means that we, we want to do that with our own people as well. So a large part of this is about becoming, uh, building these capabilities for ourselves, using our own people, um, attracting uh, 
great talent uh, and retaining uh, and challenging that, uh, those people um, as well. Uh, I'll talk a bit about that, and that will be a theme throughout uh, what I go through today. But um, as you can see there, so our, our key kind of goals, our, our, our objectives, if you like, to become uh, one of the best networks um, for 5G, uh, so for mobile, but also for fiber, so uh, for broadband and, and, uh, and LAN. Uh, to, to get that nailed. To be number one for engagement of our customers, that's absolutely key uh, to us, uh, to, to get that buy-in, that support, that, that excitement from our customers about um, engaging with us and about using our services uh, and allowing us to, to, to connect them, like I say, to the people that they love and the information they need. Um, and, uh, and again, to be a converged challenger as well. So we, um, as, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, we now are in the broadband space, so we're very keen that we start bringing our services together and, and offer a suite of um, services to our, uh, to our customers. Uh, and there are some uh, ways there that we'll do that as well. So we, we clearly want to be a cost leader uh, in many ways. We want to become digital first, and that is a, an overused term, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, what we mean by that is about reflecting uh, the changing nature of society, of our customers, um, and, and leaning into that in a way uh, that really does uh, connect in a much better way, di digitally, if you like, but, um, but really adapting to the, to the ways that uh, our customers and ourselves in society are, are now expecting and, and changing our behaviour. And to become radically simpler as an organisation. We're relatively young um, uh, as, a, as, a, as an organisation, um, but still we've, we are uh, huge, as you can imagine. So uh, with that uh, success comes some complexity, uh, uh, some sluggishness in some areas as well and so we're keen to shake shake off um, some of those ways of working that lead to that and then instead become um, a much faster paced organization through simplicity and ways of working and again through uh, through the right talent uh, right people joining us um, so for us uh, the just on, just sorry. On, sorry sorry just on the previous point what would be really interesting is to understand because of the journey you're on at the moment so how is that changing the way that engineers work in your business when you've gone from telco to more of a, a techco business? Uh, well, yeah, indeed. Uh, can I come on to that in a sec, Darren? Because uh, that's pretty much what you're about what we're talking about in a second. So we'll see if that covers off. Uh, but if it doesn't, you know, drag, drag me back uh, to that one because uh, absolutely the, the ways of working, the principles of engineering, software engineering, um, uh, are absolutely core to what we're doing here. Um, and I'll explain a few ways that they, those have. Um, manifest themselves, if you like, in, in, in this transformation. Um, so we're, as, as I've just described, we're, we're really keen to become a, a, a super engaging uh, digital customer experience to offer that to our customers, um, to genuinely delight them uh, when, when they are engaging with us. Uh, we, want to, we want to make sure the blend is right, so choosing the right technologies um, uh, to, to blend the way that, uh, that we interact with that, um, creating real personal touch, uh, instant availability and always avail always availability, uh, always on, I should say, and uh, and of course in a, in a frictionless and easy way uh, as well. So um, really want to put our customers' uh, heart reflecting that, again, that change in expectations and behaviours uh, with this uh, this revolution, if you like, of, of uh, digital or, or technology uh, and making sure that we are at the front of that transition as well. So really disrupting ourselves in many ways. Um, and again, so our, with the results of these, we'll, we'll come through in, in uh, customer satisfaction and recommendations. Um, of course, uh, commercial performance uh, as well. Um, so again, we, we, we are very keen that we, we put our customers at the heart of our transition. Um, we, we reflect our ways of working to, to again, reflect how, how, those, how our customers and ourselves are, are changing. Uh, and it, we go about it, it to reflect again in, in better performance for us as an organization, of course. I have got a little thing that says your internet connection is unstable. So Darren, just do this or something if, uh, if that continues uh, and I'll- so good, You're still good on my side. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it, but I'll switch it off and on again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what you're happens. You're right on our side so far. Indeed, yeah. So um, on to a bit about uh, our own journey uh, and um, so for us, um, especially in, in engineering, so uh, as I described earlier, the, the nature of a lot of telcos is that there's a, there's a relatively small number, certainly in the IT space of uh, Vodafone people and a large number of outsourced supplies, generally um, 
treating them as a delivery organization, which, uh, which is absolutely, it has delivered the amazing successes that we've seen uh, already as an organization. And we'll continue for a long time, uh, working in a really great way to, to maintain those, um, those platforms and those experiences uh, for our customers. What we're doing in, uh, in today, what we call digital, but what we mean really is, is in the interaction space between us and our customers, um, is, is operating in a, in a way um, that lends itself more to um, pace or agility, as, we, as I'm sure we're all uh, familiar with. Um, so how do we engage customers? Um, how do we um, experiment? How do we move at pace? Uh, and how do we do, do it in a really fun way uh, so to make sure we're all uh, really engaged? Um, so what you were talking about earlier, Darren, in terms of how it manifests itself in, for engineering, for engineers. Yeah. Uh, th this, is, this is the key part. So, so we recognize this as a cultural journey for Vodafone. It, it's, it's much, much more than just picking different tools or even you know, being in the cloud or any of those things. It, it's about leveraging technology, applying the right practices and behaviors, but yeah. fundamentally about changing our culture as an organization. Uh, and of course, that equals people. Yeah, that we, we don't uh, necessarily not motivated by changing the culture of our partners and our suppliers as much, at least, as we are our own. Um, so, engineering in our space is is coming in house. We've we've recruited an awful lot um, over the last two years uh, while we've been on this uh, this journey. We started. I think there was eight of us when I arrived. Uh, there's now I think over 150. Uh, and we've also got a long way to go as well. So we're really excited about the journey that we're on, about the differences we're seeing, uh, both you know, culturally, but also in, in terms of outcomes for our customers and, and the business as well. Um, the, the practice of engineering, if you like, the, the principles again, and I'll keep coming back to that, but the principles of those engineering are really reflecting everywhere uh, at the moment in, in what we're doing in, in uh, digital. And from that, I mean the, the technology choices we make. Um, we often have based technology choices historically on, on who do we have a great relationship with. So is it Oracle? Is it uh, Amdocs? Is it someone else? Um, um, uh, rather than necessarily what are the outcomes that we, that we want uh, from this technology choice? Is it about pace of delivery? Is it about stability and scalability? Or is it um, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So really looking at tooling uh, and, and technologies um, towards the outcomes that they give us. So there's a really uh, um, acute example, I think, of uh, our, our cloud journey, in fact, uh, where we, um, we, we're largely an AWS house in, in digital, at least. We, use, we have a multi-cloud strategy across Vodafone, but in, in our space, we use a lot of uh, AWS. Um, and the journey we went on was essentially we lifted those large legacy platforms and, and put them into AWS, um, treating it like a data center effectively and, uh, and considered ourselves cloud, in the cloud. <laughs> so, uh, and we were in a way, but um, what, we'd, what we'd missed at that stage was, um, uh, the, you know, again, the, the principles of the cloud being a, a set of services and, and, and behavior enablers, if you like. So it, it allows us to work in a different way. Um, and the technologies you choose and the, the ways of working um, are all, again, aligned to that objective of becoming a really a super fast paced organization uh, with quality and security built in uh, up front. Um, and to make sure they are engaging and, and really uh, you know, cool at the same time. So we wanna be using uh, great technologies to keep, keep ourselves engaged in, in what we're doing. Um, so we, we learned that obviously we're using all of those things that to be actually become cloud native or to really leverage the, the benefits of the cloud. We, we went on a, another journey uh, and um, started replacing things that genuinely did uh, lean into that a little bit more in our architectural patterns like microservices, et cetera, but, but also in terms of specifically the ways uh, we went about choosing uh, technology. But, but again, that practice of engineering reflects in, in so many ways for us. Uh, we, um, for example, we, uh, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Conway's Law, I'm sure you are, if you've uh, done any computer science degrees, um, but the, the principle being that how you organize yourselves as a business or as a team uh, will reflect in the, uh, in the experiences that you give to your customers at the same time. Uh, and so, and we, we can see that in many, in many places uh, in our organization and in others as well, in that you, you set yourselves up in a, in a siloed way or a, a targeted way, looking at a, um, uh, a, a set of customers or a, um, a platform or a, an experience or a whatever. Um, 
and that will come through in in the experience you give to our customers so again when i um when we got started on all of this um we had a for example a, a shop website and a, and a care website so the, the site you would go to when you log in to look at your bills and, and things like that and the other site where you, you buy your, your phones and your, your, your connections um, these were done by different teams uh, they use different ways of working they had different technologies uh, clearly different architectures um, uh, different ways of working etc and uh, and that came through very loud and clear for our customers you would go from one page to the other and you'd see a completely separate thing um, you would uh, uh, you know, you kind of still it's vaguely the same brand and etc. But but largely, you could see if you knew what you were looking for. This was uh, subtly different. Uh, someone else had built this thing, and that that's just the way it looks. If you imagine the way that it's built, you know, the architect is uh, the tooling beneath all of that stuff. Um, you can see that there's there's going to be genuinely huge differences and very little interchangeability or reuse between the two. Um, and that's just the care and shop website. So if you extrapolate that across all of our IT estates and across the entire globe as well, Lincoln, you can then start to see just how complex um, and, uh, and sluggish sometimes these things might become. So um, again, really keen that we focus on the principles of engineering, which is we focus on our practice, our discipline um, of we build platforms. Uh, we use Java to do that. We, we, we build them in this way. Uh, we break down our work in this way. We, we build websites we build applications and so we, we organize ourselves around these practices um, and if you happen to be building a, a, a shop website or a care website it's all ones and zeros yeah so uh, you uh, you build them in in the same way so um, so that really is a subtle but very significant shift for us I think in in how we started uh, to see a lot of the successes that we had um, and uh, and become much more of an engaged and, co and connected team at the same time you can we, we also in Vodafone have a um, we're largely split into an enterprise business and a, and a consumer business so focusing on b2b or, or serving our business large business customers um, and uh, on consumers as well uh, and again historically we've always built things separately and in different ways for those types of um, customers of course and and the principle again back to that core of engineering is that you might sell and, and service uh, and support um, differently depending on who your customer is but you build it in exactly the same way so uh so again bringing that back to the way of building software focusing on those principles is really where we've seen a lot of change and a lot of um real kind of pace if you like it's it's given us a real um fresh way of working uh so, so the, the what you can see here is uh kind of um, it's called a philosophy if you like for for our engineering um in that we encourage everyone in our team uh regardless of your role um, to recognize that really uh, kind of ultimately in a pretty pretty harsh way the, the only thing that we do that adds any value at all uh, is to put software into production uh, you know it, from a purely engineering perspective of course uh, and um, and so everything else we do you can you can kind of recognize what adds value and what doesn't in, in that sense um, and of course there are roles that aren't directly connected to that but are they enabling it or are they, and are they removing friction etc from it um, so we, we encourage all of our teams, specifically the engineers in, in our teams, to focus on these, this philosophy, if you like, is that you build it, uh, you, you ship it, and, and you take care of it once it's there as well. Um, and, uh, and, and I know a number of uh, organizations are now pushing these kind of uh, DevOps type principles and, and lean principles, etc. But really, it boils down to ownership and accountability and, and engagement, if you like. So we want everybody in our team to we want to remove all safety nets. We want to connect every engineer to, to production, um, uh, to the customer ultimately, to remove or reduce the proximity or the distance between the, 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 the thing that you've built and the outcome that you've generated for the customer or for the business. Um, and, uh, and again, you can find in a lot of places um, and in some pockets of Vodafone still uh, that, that you can write a line of code and it won't be in production for a good six months. Um, and probably someone's hacked away at it in the meantime and, and the opportunities change and all that stuff. So you really aren't connected to the, to the outcome that you're, that you're here to create. Um, and so it's difficult to connect and it's difficult to engage and it's difficult to really, you know, drive your own uh, sense of value and, and purpose in, in that. So really keen and, and really do push. Uh, and I can see some of our engineers on the, on the call actually as well. So I hope we <laughs> should be fixing folks. Uh, the, uh, um, 
the, the principle being uh, that you, you own what you build. That includes not just the code and the thing, but the outcome as well and the value that you, you generate for, for the company. And, and, um, and we, as, as leaders, I guess, in that space are here to effectively just encourage that and, and allow this, this practice to take place. So um, really keen that we set a clear uh, target, a vision. Uh, we motivate our teams to want to achieve it and, and we, we help them get things out of their way effectively. Um, law large organization things must change so quickly they'd be interesting to understand how you you motivate the team to to stay in touch with everything that's going on uh if it's taking six months sometimes for something to go into full production how are we how are you keeping the engineers abreast of what's going on with and what they've deployed how are they doing that on your side yeah um so to, uh, to be honest that doesn't really happen in 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 our space it's some of the more uh um, supplier-based areas uh, of IT. I'm really keen that we, because again, we, we've been really lucky in, in, in Vodafone and in, in engineering, especially in that we've, we've had an opportunity, we've got the backing uh, and the support. I mean, huge support. I've, I've just shown you our strategy and our vision, which is now fundamentally pushing this, this way of working. So, um, so it's really exciting to be given the opportunity to create this capability almost from scratch. Um, in in many ways in Vodafone and so we, we're, we're able to um, try things out and we're able to screw things up and we're, you know we're able to uh, to challenge a lot of the ways of working that exist already but but also to make sure that we we build these principles in quite early on and so with it within engineering and certainly within the um, the space that we're recruiting for uh, right now is is um, is the nature of that you know you will build it and you will ship it yourself uh, through and we'll support you in that of course uh, and and you'll improve it uh, and nurture it <laughs> and uh, and repair it as well when it goes wrong so <laughs> uh so th and that's really the the principles there so what you can see here is is we'll, we'll go through them quite quickly but it's essentially encouraging our people to uh to focus on the customer to get it right first time and to not rely on a safety net of a, a, t a testing team or a, or a release team um ultimately even an operations uh, team, um, a performance team, all of these teams that spring up, you know, when, when things happen, we, we really encourage people to, to own what they build and to, to make sure that they are uh, uh, covering it, you know, as if, as if uh, that pride, that, that, um, that real value that they put in, in what they do is really what we're here to, to encourage. Um, so, so don't rely on others, uh, build not just the product, because again, like I said, we're building a new thing here. We're transforming uh, one of the largest companies in the world. And so we're not just building products, we're building a capability to, to build products. Uh, we're building our team and our, and our ways of working together. Uh, so I encourage all of our people as well, not just to focus on the thing that they do, but on, on how we go about building software as well. So there's loads of great ideas, loads of great challenge. Um, things are moving so, pa so fast in our space, as, as I'm sure you're all aware that that it, we really love to, I mean, we'll, we're up for anything. We, we do allow teams to try all kinds of things uh, in many ways as well. Uh, but really focus on how do we continue to improve ourselves as well as, as the experiences that we're giving our customers. Uh, and as it says at the bottom there, so make sure we're not just building the product, but our team, our, our ways of working, our behavior. Let's make this a really cool place to, to be and to be an, an a mission to be part of. Yeah. Uh, I guess I've been quite lucky to uh, have, have listen to and now participate in, in a few talks that you've done about the Vodafone team oh, and I guess what's something that re was really good last time that I uh, was involved in one of your talks was that you spoke about despite how big Vodafone are as a business from a digital perspective of how you built the team uh, you've kind of built it from eight people as you said earlier in, in this to, uh, to 150 now and you, you said in the last time that I listened in about how it's almost like a startup mentality but backed by a much bigger organization. So I think yeah. that's impressive on that side. It is, yeah. Um, I remember saying that right at the beginning as well, Darren, it, it, of my time here thinking um, uh, a, a lot of people are like that, you know. So we, we do have, uh, personally, I feel that this is a golden opportunity uh, for, for me and for our teams um, to make a real difference in, in what is one of the biggest companies in the world um, and certainly one that's very important to our customers uh, as well. Um, we, we have... I've got to be honest, uh, we've got everything we need. Uh, we've got some fantastic people. We've got the support from our, uh, from our board. Um, we've got the facilities, the brand, 
the resources, etc. Um, so we 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 kind of have an open goal ahead of us. Um, we just need to kick it, you know, kick the ball. We need we need to be brave enough to 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 take the run up and to and to boot it in the back of the net. So it's uh, these things don't happen. Um, uh, well, I guess in my own experience, at least, what what I'd say is that they they these types of transitions, these transformations, will will falter for two reasons. One is that you don't have the the backing, uh, and you get to a limit. You know, that it, it starts um, usually from the grassroots, wanting to work more iteratively, more agile, use new technologies. Um, and then what you you kind of hit what is now known as the grass ceiling uh, in this, that you, okay fine you guys do what you like but um, you need to uh, you know, translate it into a much more structured and, and waterfall way of working for the business to accept if you like otherwise it just gets rejected um, we don't have that yet uh, I can genuinely say that now we've you know we've been through some journeys together but genuinely uh, as you can see from the very very top this is uh, this is now clearly our mission, uh, and and really lucky in the UK as well, specifically to be to have started first. <laughs> so we're a bit ahead of, of a lot of others um, in the, across the globe. Um, but because of the network of Vodafone and the global nature of it, we are also able to tap into some epic resource across the world, seriously. Um, but also to make a real difference and to, to influence it uh, quite a lot ourselves as well because of the uh, you know the backing we've got and the, and the fact that we went. And, and set the only other reason I, I've experienced it for these things to fail, and there's obviously lots of nuances to it, but is that you don't do it, you just don't take it, you're not bold enough, and you don't you don't push hard enough, um, and uh, and that's what I mean. These two things combined, ultimately, you can't really go wrong. You you, you um, uh, I mean, we've made some mistakes. Don't get me wrong, but we uh, ultimately, because of that backing and because of the energy across our teams. Um, I'm like absolutely convinced that this is this is happening, and we can see it happening all around us. And and it just makes personally my ambition for what we can achieve go. High. I mean, there's no limit to it now. I used to I used to think, well, if we could get there, it'd be amazing. But um, now, uh, who knows? Uh, and uh, and yeah, uh, super excited about what we what we can achieve in in that as well. But absolutely acting in a, as a startup, kind of. I mean, obviously, there's we are part of a global organization and. Uh, Sometimes uh, disruption's good, and sometimes it's not so good, you know. And, uh, and and so we need to get the balance right. Um, but but of course, with that support and with the the rope that we've been given, if you like, we get away with an awful lot, and we get a huge amount of air cover as well. So it's quite fun as well to to, to disrupt an awful lot as well. So, um, so uh, just quickly moving on to so shipping. Uh, so again, live software is is the most valuable thing that we do. Celebrate that. We went through a phase of. Um, celebrating like a successful sprint uh, or a well-groomed backlog and things like that um, which are great obviously they are great but but that's not the currency that we deal in it, it's software in production um, and so we could celebrate a fantastic sprint but nothing was in production and, and again it just we went through a bit of a journey there so really keen that we we fixate on adding value um, and getting it added as soon as possible uh, we organize ourselves in a way that supports pushing software to production as fast as we can, as iteratively as we can. Uh, we decouple things, so uh, we, we don't, um, uh, we went through a quite big phase, and we still have this in some areas where we build a load of stuff and then we pass it to a release team who prep it and ship it to production. Doesn't happen, uh, it's starting to, uh, teams are now shipping to production all the time. Uh, we, when we started actually, this is a stat for you, we, um, we shipped about once a quarter, um, to production and this was like a overnight eight hours 30 odd people um, forensically moving bits of software from one piece of infrastructure to another and then uh, fixing it <laughs> and then uh, fingers crossed and all that uh, so that was once a quarter for a website yeah um, we now ship every day like uh, I think we did 10 13 15 times a day the other day um, which you know it's amazing from where we've come from but we still have a long way to go we, we want to push infinitely uh you know um and so again that ambition is really high and, and again, the trajectory is, is not in doubt you can see it's really exciting and, and again we i can't wait to get there the, the, the mythical 100 deployments a day is what we've um uh, what we've been targeting for a little while now um as soon as we hit it i think the number is going to become irrelevant anyway and we'll just that's a nice metric isn't it so let's let's keep looking at it um, but again, help others as well. So really want to get it done faster, get it higher quality and do it with uh, a real engaged and, and happy team uh, supporting each other. 
Uh, and again, love it is what we call it. What we mean is make sure the customers, the, the value that you are offering is for our customers. Um, make sure you are heard. So don't, if you think something's wrong, if, you, if you've got a better idea, get it out there. Um, uh, make a difference. Um, one thing in our team, anybody can talk to anybody uh, and, and suggest anything. And a lot of times we'll try it out uh, and see what happens. Um, and that's largely how we've evolved um, as an organization. Really keen that we treat, especially when we're pushing more towards digital uh, first for our customers, we want to make sure that um, live service is not a, a thing that someone else cares about. It's, we, we build it in. It's, it's our most fundamental product feature, if you like, as it says there. Um, and then again, once it's there, look after it, nurture it, and, and be part of a team. You know, Create our team together. Um, we're growing like crazy. Um, uh, there, there's lots to learn in that space, uh, but don't expect me or the leadership team to be the sole creators of this team. You know, it's, we're just here to put some support in place, uh, et cetera, and then to get out of your way. But it really is about engaging the team and being part of this team and pushing, again, that creation of the team and ways of working uh, that, that suits our, our people, if you like. So that's it on the engineering space. Uh, I, we can take questions now if you like, I don't know anyone, um, or I can crack on and we'll take them at the end. What do you think? Uh, so uh, we've got a couple more slides, I guess, to, to get through. There's a couple of questions I've got regarding the slides we go through. So um, we are, we've got uh, about half an hour left on the call. So if we get through the, the next couple of seconds, about 20 minutes, we then have about 10 for Q&A, so lots of time. Cool. All right, well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take too long. So uh, this is uh, the speech mark. This, um, we started in uh, a couple of years, two years ago, just over two years ago, uh, based in our headquarters in Newbury in Berkshire, nice, uh, beautiful place. Uh, yeah. um, and, uh, but have since uh, created or transformed, if you like, that we already own this building in Southwark. Um, uh, we've completely transformed it. Uh, it was a kind of an old exchange uh, building in the days, uh, uh, but now it's, uh, it's a super cool, uh, genuinely really cool place to work. Um, uh, it was launched a couple of months ago by the Mayor of London, uh, but really does now represent um, how bought into this journey Vodafone is. Um, this is our digital hub, as we call it, um, as everyone is now starting to call theirs. But um, this is really where the heart of our engineering and um, uh, this, this transformation, if you like, towards this, this new, new culture, new way of working. Uh, is based. Um, it's across Vodafone globally and across the UK certainly. Um, um, but the, the speech mark represents, I think, what, where we're going in terms of uh, as an organisation um, to be part of the technology scene in London, to be a leader in it, to be sharing openly uh, our wins and uh, losses um, in this in this transformation that we're on, uh, the lessons that we've learned, uh, and um, and really is a is a is a great place to be. Um, as I'm sure the guys that are based there uh, will tell you. Um, just touching on uh, one of the things that's like super important to us all, uh, especially um, especially Vodafone, I'd say. I'm, I mean, I'm super proud of what Vodafone does in this space, but I know across the organization, it's something that we really do um, uh, genuinely, I would say, like sincerely um, believe in. And because I say that because you can see it everywhere. Uh, it's, it's certainly not, a slide or a thing it's like it's a culture and it's again it's something that i'm really proud to be part of um but diversity inclusion um is clearly good for the business um because because more diversity breeds more ideas and, and more suggestions uh, and uh, more challenge um which can only equal better outcomes for everybody um, but of course it's the right thing to do as well and firmly believe that um, myself but also I, that, that that's why i enjoy being part of this organization so much because i because we, we do, as a, as a company, genuinely believe this stuff. Um, individuals own their own career. Um, we do have role models. We can have mentorships, coaching, um, allies, uh, and, and leaders. And Vodafone, as, a, as an organization, can um, inspire and support everyone, um, uh, regardless. Um, appointments that we make are always based on merit. Uh, with equal pay and without discrimination and we've got a lot of frameworks in place uh, and assurances to make sure that is the case but again it's kind of organically happening and, and certainly um, part of our DNA now. Um, uh, everything 
everything is inclusive or inclusive is everything uh, and, and gender, culture, race, skills, age, LGBT, disability um, absolutely uh, is um, a core part of our beliefs that, that, that we, we support and we, we encourage and we, uh, we, we will help uh, and uh, all, all uh, diversity in Vodafone uh, and, and all of our leadership uh, have a positive intent. Uh, there's a lot of support for leaders, there's a lot of training involved, uh, and we, of course, must be aware of unconscious bias as well as um, uh, anything else. So genuinely uh, core part of our beliefs. Um, and again, I say that with confidence because you can see it uh, living and breathing in our, in our ways of working. Um, so as, as you can see there, so really um, important to us is to build this inclusive culture uh, and, and celebrate differences. We do that in lots of ways, uh, lots of really cool ways uh, as well. Um, but it is again part of our part of our DNA, I would say, as as is achieving uh, gender balance, um, making sure support for LGBT uh, plus is is embedded, it's ingrained, uh, it's it's supported, and um, uh, the confidence that everybody needs to be themselves and, and work in their own way uh, and achieve what they want in that way is is really again core part of of what we do. Um, diversity and ethnicity uh, across organ the organisation. All life stages again, so we we have some really cool uh, support in place for um, all kinds of situations for people. Uh, the one that springs to mind is the return to work policy for uh, for new mums uh, and well, new parents, I should say, uh, where we're super flexible, offering some amazing benefits. Uh, for, uh, for example, um, uh, full pay but uh, reduced working hours, things like that, um, is really what we're proud to share and, and proud to be part of uh, to to encourage again everybody to be to be part of what we're what we're achieving here at Vodafone uh, and of course being accessible to to everybody regardless of um, uh, their ability their situation etc so again really key key part of uh, certainly our recruitment process but also um, just our DNA as an organization as well um, I would say. I guess on the diversity piece um, I think that if you look at most companies in in London and across the UK everyone's trying to improve the diversity across their teams um in particular in your team what are Vodafone doing to uh to get this talent in because it's often very easy to uh to want diversity um but it's often very hard to to get the right talent in diversity wise so it'd be interesting to see what Vodafone are doing to encourage that whether you're doing it on the discipline so, yeah I'd say there's probably two, two two things that I would say to that the first is um of course the 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 process uh, and the uh, the approach that we take needs to be inclusive and, and accessible to absolutely everybody. Um, otherwise, um, you know, clearly uh, they're at a disadvantage from the start. But but I think secondly, for me, um, it's it's more about uh, authenticity. I would say um, uh, in, in that if because I I'm, I know that we live these values um, and I see them every day, and I'm really excited and like kind of privileged to be part of an organization like that um it it, it happens organically if you like it's not we, we don't like search <laughs> for it. It, it it's it's because it's a natural such a naturally occurring uh, thing at vodafone and this sounds a bit corny i know but it, it is it is something i really believe in um uh it it's not something that we necessarily um uh engineer if you like uh what i would say though is uh we, we call it the four c's uh which is that our, our colleagues our customers communities and co-partners well, it's like partners but co-partners because there needs to be a c so uh we um we we look for diversity we encourage uh, enable uh and um uh you know really like i said really look for that diversity and that support for it everywhere we we go who we interact with um who we work with you know in terms of uh, our people um, who we support, but also how we how we behave and and, um, and, and support society more broadly than just within uh, the confines of Vodafone. So, um, I I think that's what I'd say in that space. It's something that's a, a really kind of proud to be part of, um, and certainly uh, the news that we share internally and, and the successes we've seen and the and the confidence we see in our people is something that I'm really really proud of, proud of. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so I'm just going to fire up a couple of, uh, well, I think it's just a screenshot this time, but this just, I mean, this is a small one, but it's also super cool. So I do want to just tell you about it a little bit, but this, this uh, navigation bar, you can see at the top here, um, 
it's a navigation bar, yeah, uh, but it, it represents for us um, part of the transformation that, that I'm really excited about. So it, it's, it's a great piece of user experience. It's driving much better performance uh, in terms of click through rates and the number of interactions people need to do to get to where they want to be. So, and that, that's awesome. It's much better than the old one. Um, but it was built uh, and shipped and is monitored and, and improved by engineers, by, by the teams. Um, it was done just a couple of weeks ago, which is why it's fresh in our minds and I've stuck it in here, but, uh, but it really is a great example. Um, we, we had a, a, um, a little event in, in the speech market in the building I've just shown you where we reserved a little corner and we did the releasing in the public. So we went, we, we, the teams, they would normally do it from their desk, but they, they kind of gathered together and just kind of opened the doors and everybody could come in and see all the, the cool pipelines, the automation, the, uh, the telemetry kick in, the, 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 the feeling, the vibe was, was really cool when we, were, when we were delivering this thing to production. It's having great uh, feedback from customers and from the business, but at the same time, for me, it was, it's really kind of, it shows how far we've come in terms of our engineering principles and, and practice as well. Uh, and finally, just want to show you our new app, which again, uh, follows those same principles. Uh, these are native apps, so they're not released 100 times a day. Uh, that would be pretty annoying for our customers. So, uh, the, but the frameworks, the platforms, etc., have been built in this new way. Um, and we recently launched it um, to great fanfare. There's actually no sound, so I can continue uh, talking over the top, but uh, it's part of what we're doing. It's bringing things together. You can see the chat bot there, um, which is now part of our app. It's also part of our website. It's part of our call center estate. And so bringing all of this together uh, for our customers uh, and seeing not just the cool engineering practice, but actually the outcomes we're making. The million people a day are using this application now. So it's, it's really great to see the impact that we're having at the same time as doing loads of cool stuff. Uh, like I've, uh, I've literally just joined uh, Vodafone back uh, after some time away. And I think the difference from what you can see from customer experience is huge. So oh. and, uh, the, the amount of uh, touch points on getting Vodafone on different areas now is incredible. Like the My Vodafone stuff has been great from, from coming back perspectives. So I think that it's obvious the impact it's having. Oh, cool. I'm uh, really, really glad to hear that because yeah, it, it is a great experience and it's, it's again, really exciting to see it having been built in, in the new way of working that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to push it. Cool. So um, I guess a question for, I've got a couple of questions from my side before we jump into the, uh, the user question stuff. Um, so you, you spoke obviously quite candidly during uh, that about the journey that Vodafone have been on from a digital transformation side. Yeah. Digital transformation is uh, one of those phrases in the, in the industry that everyone talks about. Um, but from, from your side, it'd be really interesting to understand whether you think that companies ever complete a digital transformation. Because from my side, it's probably always ongoing. Mm. So it'd be interesting to get your take on that. Uh, but no, is the answer. Uh, of course, it's never going. Uh, it's never, uh, it never ends, of course. It's an evolution, an iterative experimentation of where we're going to end up. But I would say that we, in the early days, one of the big lessons we learned is, is that one, in fact, um, uh, as, a, as a large, like, huge organization globally, um, we, we did go through a phase of, um, right, we're going to do a digital transformation uh, and then architecting what it will be and how we will look and behave at the end. And then you can say, well, if you've got a target, you can then measure yourself to how far done you are. So it didn't last long, I'll be honest, but uh, we, we went through this little journey that I'm sure everybody goes through um, uh, and, and quite quickly realized that, you know, stop focusing on uh, like KPIs and, and how mature you are and, and these types of frameworks that, that, that happen. Um, be, because a lot of, you know, a lot of, um, There'll be a lot of people out there that sell you the answer uh, and sell you a framework and sell you an approach. And say, You've got to use Spotify model, etc. cetera. Um, uh, when really the, the answer that we've learned is, is uh, uh, you, you focus on principles uh, of building better software, do it faster, do it with a smile on your face, uh, make it secure, etc. cetera. Um, and not worry about how you do it or how you are going to look in five years when you have done it, because it will probably be completely different and you'll just get upset and you'll beat yourself up for not, you know that that kind of thing. Uh, so we are much more in a space, and that 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 strategy I, I showed you earlier is is a is a manifestation of that. We're in the space now where we experiment, we learn really quickly, we move very quickly, um, and 
focusing on those principles and on, on those kind of guardrails, if you like, um, rather than guidelines or rules. We, we say, here are the guardrails, the principles that we want to work by and, and how we want to approach it. Um, specifically how it happens and where we end up is, is much less of a stress for us at the minute um, because you can see iteratively that things are improving and so who knows where the end is uh, um, and, uh, and what we're going to look like. So no is the answer, there's no end. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and non-surprisingly, the, uh, for the big question in the room, the elephant in the room right now is what's going on in, in the UK and around the world with COVID-19. Yeah. So it'd be really interesting to understand, so I know obviously I work quite closely with you guys, so I understand that you're, you're still carrying on business as usual in, in a lot of ways on recruiting in the team. So it'd be interesting to understand in the digital team how you're getting around the complications of what's going on. Oh, cool. Uh, so, so yes, it's obviously unprecedented times. Uh, I'm here at home, uh, as, as I'm sure most of you are. Uh, we're a technology company, so we, you know, we're pretty good at, uh, at, at communicating and, and communication uh, technology. Um, it, it's been, for me, it's been amazing, the reaction of Vodafone, both in how we work, um, as in there's been very little disruption. Uh, I mean, it's been, there's been some things that we've had to uh, really kind of work at and, and prepare for to support various areas of our organization, but um, it, it's been very little impact on our business, if you like, um, because it is so slick, uh, the way we can work and communicate. Um, in terms of, but, so the, the recruitment side is, is um, uh, or the, this process, if you like, is, is online now, as you'd expect. Uh, so mostly it's online interviews. Uh, we have big induction events. Um, they're online now. Uh, but again, we're a, we're a digital organization. We're a communications company. Um, and so it isn't really slowing us down. It's just an adapting of, of how we do it. But I guess the, the thing I'm most proud of, as well as how we've reacted and responding to this, to this crisis is um, back to those principles, that purpose that I mentioned earlier um, of, uh, you know, we're, we're building extra capacity into all of our networks, for example, the broadband usage uh, and, and mobile usage, et cetera, is clearly going up because people need to stay connected. And, and we're really in an important position there to make sure that our customers are still connected um, despite the disruption, even more so now. Um, but also that we are able to support where we can as well. For, for example, we, um, uh, our customers aren't charged for access to the NHS resources, for example, at times like this. Um, and so it's little things like that we, we, can, we can do as well uh, to, to make sure that we are contributing as well as uh, performing as a business. Sure, awesome. Um, so some questions from the uh, participants. Um, so firstly, what are, the, uh, what are the investments in training with Vodafone? Uh, what are the investments in training? Yes. Uh, um, uh, twofold, I would say. Yes. Yeah, so I'd say there's two, two main things. Uh, we have huge resource already in Vodafone. Again, you'd expect in a company like our size, there's a uh, plural site and, and courses and training, and uh, we call it the Vodafone University, um, where there's just a huge number of resources, uh, um, uh, free subscriptions to you name it. Um, uh, uh, but at the same time, also uh, investment uh, in our people when there's specific training needs, conferences, etc., cetera, um, uh, that will be available as well. Awesome. Um, and then from the, uh, there's a, a question on your, uh, on your own team in the, the engineering team. So um, from a perspective of what are the biggest challenges that you think that the, your team is facing in, uh, in 2020? Yeah. yeah. Cheers, Rob. Uh, appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, the biggest challenge uh, for our team is is scaling, really. Well, it's a few things. If I have to pick one, it's probably um, how to continue the pace uh, and the successes that we've seen as as we grow. Um, there's, uh, we started a couple of years ago looking after part of our consumer websites, so a part of the sales journey, buying SIM cards. Uh, we now do all of consumer, all of uh, a lot of enterprise. Um, uh, we do a lot of technology work. And we also now are working with uh, our uh, service and support organization as well to, to support our, our customers, um, call centers and, and different ways of working interact, uh, digitally. So, so really it's about scale. Um, it's about how do we maintain those principles, that pace, but do it at a crazy scale that none of us really uh, thought about a couple of years ago. So I'd say that's a big one. I'll talk to Rob about some other specifics uh, <laughs> later as well. Awesome. Um, how do you incorporate machine learning or artificial intelligence into the organization? Um, ah, 
um, you know, does that add any value? Uh, well, it does. Uh, so we, I think a lot of companies went through this same, same phase of big, uh, you know, uh, not so much big data that, that clearly is adding huge value. Um, machine learning, uh, uh, AI, um, uh, uh, blockchain, you know, it, how, these sound so, super cool. What are we going to do? And come up with loads of use cases. Some of them are doing some amazing work across Vodafone, um, uh, speci specifically in, in the data space with machine learning and, and, uh, and in AI as well across the globe for Vodafone. But a smaller example, which was only posted on our internal uh, Facebook the other day, uh, is around just telemetry, machine learning around uh, the, the, the behavior uh, and reaction of our software and production, depending on different trends of customers, etc. cetera. Um, it, it had been learning, it spotted a variance, it called it out and we put, put out an issue before it occurred. So it's, it's happening on a big and, and a fairly small scale, but, but again, it's an example of um, I didn't actually know that was happening until someone told me it, it was done. And so and our people had developed this approach, they'd implemented it, and then they celebrated it uh, as well. And so, uh, I guess, again, it's a demonstration of uh, kind of pretty much trial, trying anything. Nice. Um, question on the, the building of the team at Birdfone. So uh, how was the, the team built? Was it upscaling resources already in the business? Or was it hiring, or oftentimes is it hiring uh, people with the right skill set from external? Uh, well, both. Um, so we, uh, first of all, a lot of external. Um, uh, a lot of recruitment happened. We, we brought, of course, some great talent in from across Vodafone, um, but, but again, largely external, especially when with the move to London. Yep. Uh, it was a lot of external talent there. But we, we do also have some like, awesome uh, uh, um, folks from across Vodafone uh, within our space. But we also have um, a number of initiatives outside as well. So we, um, we're uh, I'm a big fan of Makers Academy, for example, um, where we can um, attract talent uh, from, from makers who've been through the boot camps and the academies there. So again, not just on the syntax, but on the ways of working as well. But, but also um, a few of our own people in Vodafone have been through, we've, uh, we've put them through Makers as well. We've got, we've got that um, available to us as well. So we've got some great examples. Um, uh, um, uh, which, uh, we've, so from retail, for example, we, we've got colleagues on our engineer in team now developing uh, our, our, our products um, who came from our retail stores, never seen a line of code in their life, from our, from our release team, uh, from other areas across Vodafone, from networks, for example, where um, they really want to get involved, they want to change their, they want to upskill, um, uh, and they want to get stuck into to coding or into engineering, and so we're able to support them in that as well. So from from all kind of degrees, I think we we uh, attract a, a broad range of talent. Yeah, you kind of answer my my following question. I was going to ask about uh, people from retail. Do they often come across into the engineering team? Because I suspect uh, you've got a lot of people uh, in that retail space, given what you do from a brick and mortar perspective. Um, yeah. so a lot of opportunities to grab these people, I guess. Uh, uh, we do, yeah. We're, so we're from retail, from call centres. Uh, we've got a guy, Prash, on the team who um, began, came from a retail, uh, from a retail store, wanted to get into engineering. Uh, so we we trained him and then we brought him on, and now he's delivering some super cool stuff uh, and working in those ways that I've described as well. So um, it's not just uh, you know academia here. It's it's really about um, the ways of working uh, and the engineering uh, principles that that we follow. So yeah, really great success story and, and um, great to see. Uh, uh, some of the guys. So Solomon, for example, he, he um, left our release team. Uh, he um, was uh, often being told things by developers that he wasn't following, and so he went trained up. And now he's building uh, our new care website and a response. Uh, sorry, a progressive web app at the same time. So nice. really cool stories uh, all over the place. Yeah. Nice. Um, so. Uh, a question on to use your expertise as uh, one of the four fingers in the digital transformation space. So question on uh, the current landscape of digital transformation in the UK. And um, it'd be good to get your perspective on not just Vodafone's uh, sector, but other sectors. Where do you think that the, the market is up to at the moment? Um, I think we are on a curve, uh, as, as I'm sure a lot of people can see. Um, the... The, the way things the, tend to go, in my experience, is uh, that uh, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz. There's a lot of spirit and, uh, and will to do something very cool, uh, but not necessarily understanding of what it is and how to apply it locally to your organization and your, your context. 
Um, I think we're through a lot of that now. Uh, and that it's at that point, not that I have a major problem with it, but it's that, at that point when the consultants and the, co the agile coaches and everything else come out and they've got a huge part to play, don't get me wrong, they, they've had some, we've had some amazing uh, folks here in Vodafone. Um, but again, it's this, it's this practice of um, uh, templated solutions, trying to hook on to an answer when in fact the, the approach is to learn, be inspired by others, but don't copy them because it won't work and you'll just upset yourself when you realize that. So, so really do focus on um, what made those people successful? Uh, what, what can we, will that apply to us? And then, okay, how do, how do we speed up? How do we decouple? How do we, um, uh, you know, really focus, how do we bring the customer closer? All of that type of thing, um, because it will be different uh, for everybody. And I think that realization's happened. And so I expect that the trend is gonna get much slicker now. People will start, will start to see a lot of success um, across the board. Thanks. Um, we're in the final five minutes, so a couple of final questions before we uh, run off. So um, one of the guys has asked uh, to talk about, because obviously you spoke about uh, my Vodafone earlier, and that big project that. Yeah. So what uh, the guy's working on at the moment, I'm sure that you can't talk about everything, but what are the guys working on at the moment and what kind of technologies are you using on those projects? Uh, so we, we um, I should have had a, an image of our kind of, high level architecture, if you like. So we, we build, um, let's say, so, so the IT stack in Vodafone, very deep, you know, it goes right from our, let's say the website at the top or the app at the top, all the way down to the core Oracle CRM database, you know, um, and these things are clearly meant for different purposes. You know, one, one of them has to have super high integrity and, and, and resilience, and all that stuff. Um, and at the top, you have to move at pace. So you need to keep engaging customers, et cetera. Uh, we, we built uh, what we call the DXL, the digital experience layer. Um, uh, and that's a Java uh, microservices uh, architected uh, layer that kind of it sits on top of the core IT estate. Um, and, allow, and then into that, it connects our digital channels, so our websites, uh, our apps, et cetera. Um, that, that allows us to work, like operate in a different way. It allows us to work differently because it means we can decouple culturally as well as uh, technically from the core of the IT estate. Um, but it means we can try out new cool technologies as well. Like, uh, so that's written in Java. Uh, we use a lot of Java script frameworks uh, in our web channels, uh, React, uh, Node, et cetera. Um, but also a lot of uh, now uh, kind of um, cloud native uh, technologies and approaches as well. We, we're just rolling out Fargate, for example, our first foray into serverless uh, for a lot of our, our applications. So kind of broad range across the programming, across the engineering and across the operational uh, and um, service side of, of things as well. Cool. Uh, I guess the final question um, is uh, asking about the, a little bit more about the, uh, the transformation for Vodafone and how deep it goes within the organization. Because uh, I think that sometimes there's certain parts of, uh, of an organization, something like finance, that's very legacy systems based and doesn't get touched. Is the digital transformation going across all the business or is it a high level? Where, whereabouts is it? Uh, no, it's happening everywhere. Um, like I said at the beginning, so it's right from the very top. Uh, this is recognized as the, the future of the company to become a technology business. Uh, and for us, that means this transformation is now, it reaches everywhere, touches everything. Um, but just like anything, it started uh, as a incubated um, initiative, if you like. Uh, and every time it grew too big and started kind of butting up against different ways of working, then the organization had to pivot again. So it's a series of um, hundreds of micro transformations really that this this journey is it's not a big which is the same answer as before that it's not a big thing with a start and end it's just a continuous series of actually very small in some cases uh, changes and transformations um, that will result in the outcomes that we want for our customers and, and for both of them and for our team to be honest and, and the way of working that we want awesome awesome um so i guess we we come to the end of um of the time um just wanted to obviously thank everyone for attending um, if you've got any more questions that come in over the next hour or so, feel free to send them through and then I'll make sure that the, the content team on our team on our side are uh, getting these out and visible. Um, but again, thanks for your, uh, for your time, Ben. No worries. Thanks very much. And uh, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, guys.